Welcome to Road Keys Real Quick. My name is Rick Smith. I'm here with Todd Wagner. How yes, you, doing, you are. Todd? Hey, Rick. Hello, friends. Well, listen, I, this is one I can't even ask for myself. So I'm a dad. I have two children. Mm-hmm. I have a full-time job. I'm training for a marathon. I'm a guy who also wants to walk with Jesus. And I just have a lot. I'm in a community group. I have mm-hmm. a lot going on. And, and when it comes to priorities, how should a guy or a woman who loves God set their priorities? I mean, there's so many good things out there to, to be involved in. All right. So what should we put first? Yeah. Okay. One of the things I love to talk to people uh, about when we're, we're mentioning this is that even uh, sometimes, I worked at a place for a long time that, that used the slogan, uh, the I'm third life, which is like God's first, others second, and uh, me third. So I live the I'm third life. The only thing that's wrong with that is it, it, it prioritizes God. Like if you take care of God's stuff first, you can get on to other people and onto yourself. And that just isn't a consistent biblical worldview, okay? Now, they don't commonly use it like that, but what I would say is the Bible doesn't talk about the prioritization of God in your life. It talks about how Jesus should be uh, preeminent in your life, first in all things. Whatever you do, okay, whether in word or deed, do all to the glory of God, okay? But what we're talking about now is how I spend my time. Yeah. Knowing that um, when I spend my time, I want to do so as an individual that seeks to live for Christ. It's not like I've done my Christian living and now can get on to more secular living. The idea that there is a spiritual and a secular divide, Rick, where these are the things I do because I'm spiritual and these are the things I do because I'm a man of the world, is a completely unbiblical idea. There is no spiritual secular divide. We're supposed to have Christ preeminent over all things. But what do I do with my time? I've got a job, I've got kids, I've got a wife. Got things I enjoy. And I like to do. entertainment. I, like I want to go see a movie every once in a while. Yeah. So here's here's what I would say uh, to you. I, I tell guys the easiest way to understand how you should spend your time is you want to make sure that you do the things first that only you can do. Okay. So let me let me just say something here before I go far. We we know we want to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All right. In all things. Okay. Uh, we know that everything we do, we want to be done in love, it says in 1 Corinthians 16, uh, 14. We know whether we eat or drink, we do all to the glory of God. Again, there is the idea of uh, preeminence. But when do I get to go to a movie? When do I go home? When do I work more? So I would say make sure you do the things that only you can do first. So I know this. I know that I'm the only guy in the history of the world named Todd Wagner with this specific DNA, living between, you know, 1960-something and whenever my days on earth are finished, and um, that, that God wants a personal relationship with me. He wants to know me. He wants to grow in intimacy with me. He wants me to abide with him. And so I need to make sure that I am always focused on my relationship with God first. The great thing is, is when I'm focused on my relationship with God, when I'm growing in my relationship with God, when I'm overflowing in my abiding with Him, I'm going to be a better uh, husband. I'm going to be a better dad. I'm going to be a better employee or employer. So I would just say, as a matter of first importance, okay, this one thing shall I seek, David said. Um, uh, Again, Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount said, seek first God and His kingdom and His purposes. So uh, I would make sure that every day, that throughout the day, continually, we are um, a person who is abiding with, being controlled by the Spirit, and growing in our understanding of who Christ is. Secondly, I'm the only guy alive today that can be a husband to my wife, Alex Wagner. Okay, No other man on earth can be a loving husband who cherishes and honors. And so I better make sure I do that well. It means i got to know my wife, live with her in an understanding way, uh, realize that there are certain times when she's going to need more of me, and I've got to always make that uh, a high priority because I'm to love her as I love myself, okay? A lot of times guys look at their wives and they go, man, if you just felt like me, this wouldn't be an issue, right? But the truth is, is if it was me, I'd make it my primary issue. And the Bible says in Ephesians 5 that we're to love our wives as our own bodies. We're one with them. And so... Um, we don't try and convince them they shouldn't feel that way. We understand them and we respond to them. So you spend whatever time you need to to love your wife in a way that's appropriate, okay, as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Uh, thirdly, I'm the only guy on the face of the earth that can be a biological father uh, to my six children. And now my six and a half, my uh, daughter is, uh, oldest daughter is married. And so I've got to be available to my kids, okay? Um, the scripture talks about how g- children are a gift from the Lord. It talks about how there are arrows in my quiver as a warrior and that I better make sure that I aim them well, use them well, guard them, protect them, 
and deploy them for God's glory in every way that I can. So what I'm trying to walk you through is there are certain things that only I can do. Like for me, right now in the job that I'm in, I'm the only guy that um, can provide some of the leadership and play the role that God's assigned me to play at Watermark. And so I better make sure I do the things that I need to do so that I can play my role well in a way that honors God and is a blessing to people and that I live and steward my gifts for the common good. So the way you set your priorities is by asking yourself, what has God uniquely called me to, equipped me for, or created me for? And then once you get those things done, okay, I think uh, there's a lot of freedom in there. And you know, I think sometimes we, we wanna know, gosh, am I gonna do exactly what God wants me to do today? And if you walk by faith, you don't violate his scripture, you abide with him, uh, you love your own household well, you do your job with excellence because that's the way to honor and worship God, then you've got plenty of freedom, okay? I mean, all I know is that uh, Paul at the end of his life said, I've fought the good fight, right? I've lived my life in a way that was an honor to you. And so uh, Paul made it preeminent in his life to live with Jesus and for Jesus once he came to understand who Jesus was. So people are kind of looking for tips and techniques. What I would just say is, Make it your business to know God, walk with him, and to be faithful where only you can be faithful, first and foremost. Good stuff. All right. Well, great. Well, I hope that was really helpful for you, and we'll see you next week on another episode of Real Truth Real Quick.